Hello and welcome back to Rongmar. In today's maths lesson, we're taking a second look at capacity. Our waltz for today's lesson is to estimate the capacity of different containers using litres and millilitres. But first, let's warm ourselves up. I'm going to show you an item, and I'm going to tell you a measurement that we want to take. You need to figure out which unit of measurement would we use to measure that particular thing. Are you ready? Okay, here's the first one, this bottle of Coke. If I wanted to measure the capacity of this bottle of Coke, what measurement would I use to measure it? Pause the video and choose the correct answer. Well, the answer, of course, for this one is milliliters for capacity. Give yourself a tick if you got that, and let's go on to the second one. We've got an elephant. And if we want to measure, let's go for the weight of this elephant. What unit of measurement would you use to measure that? Pause the video and write down which unit of measurement we would use for the weight of this elephant. Well, did you get that correct? Of course, for something this heavy, we would use kilograms to measure the weight of the elephant. How about this? The tallest building in the world. What unit of measurement would we use to measure the height of this building? Pause the video and write down the correct unit of measurement. Well, of course, to measure the height, we'd either use centimeters or meters. But with a building this big, we would definitely use meters to measure it. Let's try another one. Here I've got some jelly worms. If I wanted to measure the length of these jelly worms, which unit of measurement would I use to do that? Pause the video and write down the correct unit of measurement for length of these worms. Well, of course, we would use centimeters to measure the length of these small jelly worms, unless they were massive, but they're usually not. And our last one, take a look at this swimming pool. If I wanted to measure the capacity of this swimming pool, which unit of measurement would I use? Pause the video and write down the correct answer. Well, of course, the capacity measurements that we learned in the last lesson are milliliters and liters. But this is quite a big container, so we would use liters to measure the capacity of this one. Great stuff. We are all warmed up and ready to jump into today's estimating lesson. So you might remember that our Walt for today said we would be measuring and estimating the capacity of different containers. Now, we've done a good bit of estimating over the last two weeks. First, we estimated lengths. Then we estimated weights. So you're pretty familiar with how estimating works. But just very quickly, can you remember what does it mean to estimate the measurement of something? Pause the video and write down what that word means. Well, remember, to make an estimate means to make a logical and sensible guess. We use everything we already know about capacity and we make the best possible guess we can with the information we know. So it's not a random guess at all. It's quite the opposite. It's a very well thought through and calculated guess. Let's try our hand at a few estimating questions. We'll start off simple and gradually get more difficult as the lesson goes on. But first, I'm going to show you three containers. All I want you to do is to try figure out which one has the biggest capacity and which one has the smallest. Are you ready? Okay, here are your three containers. We've got a teaspoon, we've got a bottle of bleach that you might see in your home, and we've got a can of Coca-Cola. Out of these three containers, which one is the smallest capacity and which one has the largest capacity? Pause the video and give it your best estimate. Well, how did you get on? It was probably quite easy to estimate which one of these containers had the smallest capacity, because if you've ever seen these containers before, you would know straight away that a teaspoon can hold a very small amount of liquid. 
But even though you don't know exactly how much liquid a teaspoon can hold, you can pretty confidently estimate that it's quite a bit smaller than a Coke can or a bleach. And you'll be correct, because a teaspoon can only hold 5 milliliters, so this is our smallest container. How about our largest one? Well again, if you've seen these two containers in real life before, you could probably estimate this too. You know roughly how much liquid is in a Coke can. You know also roughly how big the container is to look at. When you compare that to the size of a bleach bottle, you hopefully realise that the bleach bottle would hold a lot more liquid. So our largest container is the bleach bottle. Did you get both of them? If you didn't, don't worry, you'll have a chance to redeem yourself now in the next few questions. Okay, same idea. I want you to put these containers in order from the smallest capacity to the largest. So rearrange them. We have an orange juice drinking container for one person. We've got a big bottle of milk, a carton of milk. And we have a super glue container. Pause the video and put these containers in order from the smallest to the largest capacity. Well, here's what you should have got. Our smallest container is our super glue container. They're very, very small if you've ever seen one before. Only five milliliters. Our second container is our juice carton for one person. Same size as the milk cartons you get in school, 200 milliliters. And finally, our large container filled with milk is two liters. So that is our largest capacity. Let's try one more of those types of questions. Same task again, put them in order from the smallest capacity to the largest capacity. We have got a yogurt tub, we've got a large carton of apple juice, and we have a mug. Pause the video and put them in the correct order. Well, here's what you should have got. The smallest container is the yogurt pot, around 120 milliliters. The middle container is the mug, 350 milliliters. And the largest container is the apple juice carton with one litre. Again, we could have made pretty good estimates there because if you think of a mug, you wouldn't be able to fit a full carton of apple juice into one mug, so it must be smaller. One other piece of information that can help us make accurate estimates is our relationship fact we learned in the last lesson. Can you remember how many milliliters are in one litre? Pause the video and write down the answer. Well, hopefully you remembered that there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. That's going to be very helpful for the next set of estimates. This jug here has got a capacity of one liter. Remember, that's the same as 1000 milliliters. This means that if I fill it all the way up to the top, there would be one liter of liquid inside. That's the same as saying there would be a thousand milliliters inside. Let's try some different estimates. I'm going to show you a jug like this filled with water. You need to use everything you know about capacity and about this jug. Estimate how much liquid is inside the jug. Are you ready? Okay, here's your first one. Using all you know about this jug and about capacity, how many milliliters of water do you estimate are inside the jug? Pause the video and write down an answer. Well, did you get close? The answer is 800 milliliters of water. Remember, an estimate is a close guess. It doesn't have to be exact. But if you looked at the jug, you know that the halfway mark is 500 milliliters because this is a one liter jug. And it's more than that, so it's got to be somewhere between 500 and 1,000. Any estimate between there is pretty good. Let's try another one. Using all you know about this jug, it's the same jug as before, and about capacity, how many milliliters of orange juice do you think are in this jug? Pause the video and write down your best estimate. Well, how close did you get? So there was 450 milliliters of orange juice in this jug. And if you were using all of your knowledge of capacity and of this jug, you would realize that there's a 
about half the jug filled and half of a litre is 500 millilitres. So anything near that is a good estimate. And one last one. Have a look at this jug of Coke. Using all you know about this jug and about capacity, how many millilitres of Coke do you estimate are in the jug? Pause the video and write down your answer. Well, the final answer is 600 millilitres of Coke. So again, using your understanding of this jug and of capacity, you can see that there's just over half a litre in this jug. So anything near to 600, 700 or 500 is a good estimate. So our wall for today's lesson was to estimate the capacity of containers using litres and millilitres. When you're ready, you can try the practice activities down below. That's all we have time for today. Until next time, take care.